In just three weeks, colleges and universities in our area will once again come alive as students return for the fall semester. But with COVID-19 once again a growing concern, these colleges are already preparing to keep everyone safe. With dirt, Pennsylvania County leaders have begun a new project that will bring new life to a former mill site here in Hurt. Mark, this is the fullest that the lot has been in months here at Danville's GM dealership, Woodall Chevrolet GMC. And just weeks ago, he says, gone are the days of those packed lots. He says most dealerships will have now a 30 to 60 day inventory. Live in Danville, Daniel Cruz, ABC 13 News. Now, Mark, business owners along Main Street here in Danville want to reiterate to customers, plan ahead to shop early. Back to you. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Walls at Martinsville Speedway where NASCAR's round of eight is now the championship four. And ever since this fall Martinsville race moved to the penultimate race, wrapping up the round of eight, the drama has increased year by year. And today was no exception with drivers making last minute passes and ruffling a few feathers as we head towards Phoenix. But which drivers would make it there? Kyle Busch just above the cut line and fourth while others like Chase Elliott, Brad Keselowski and Martin Truex all looking to battle their way into Phoenix. The first two stages largely uneventful. Kyle Larson on the pole, but the five team would run into pit row issues. Larson busted twice for speeding out of the pits. He'd settle for 14th. The defending Xfinity 500 champ Chase Elliott with one of the fastest cars of the day, but Brad Keselowski gets into him in turn four, sending the nine car spinning out of contention. But a stage two win locks Elliott into the finals. Five-time Martinsville winner Denny Hamlin then took control with only non-playoff driver Alex Bowman in his rearview mirror. But then, seven laps left, Bowman knocks into the 11, and Hamlin spins out in the corner. Alex Bowman survives overtime to win his first grandfather clock. Hamlin Hamlin survives and advances on points, but confronts the 48 before he could burn out in victory lane. The two sides with plenty to say after the checkered flag falls at Martinsville. He's been on the other side of that. He's crashed guys here for wins. I hate doing it. Obviously, it's not. I don't want to crash somebody, and uh, I just got in, got loose underneath him, and spun him out. So, regardless, we get a freaking grandfather clock. It's uh, pretty special. He's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. Um, he gets his every week and just you know he's terrible he's just terrible and he sees one opportunity and he, he takes it you know we got in we did what we had to do but like I just wanted to race uh, there at the end and just um, you know he's just terrible so here's your final leaderboard. Alex Bowman takes checkers. Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski two and three, but both miss out on the finals. Martin Truex Jr. gets the fourth slot for Phoenix, surviving a tire rub and a fourth place finish. Well, that's going to do it here from the paperclip, but we've got more from Victory Lane coming up tomorrow on Track Talk on 13 News starting at 6 o'clock. All right, before we head home, let's send it home to Will Stafford for one last check of the Workday Forecast. Will. ABC 13's Daniel Cruz shows us the designs that executives just unveiled. And your husband or your boyfriend or your son said, I'm going to hang out with the three sisters. They're talking about the smokestacks. Mayor Alonzo Jones sharing a few laughs today as he and Caesars executives unveiled the design for the Danville Resort. There's the money shot. This is the front door entry off of Main Street. This photo shows the hotel, the iconic smokestacks that will remain, and the entrance to the casino. Started with a, a vision of how do, you, how do you blend Caesars, this iconic brand, with this rich history of Danville. Executives spent months learning how to do just that, exploring the River City and getting input from citizens. Design never stops. We continue to refine and develop and try to make it as good as we can up until the last minute. Here's how the property will be laid out. The 500 room hotel and conference center will get built beside those existing smokestacks and the casino and parking deck will be built where the old finishing mill is currently. There's a lot of cleanup on that site before we actually start coming out of the ground with the, the new construction. Even with a lot of work ahead and more than two years until opening day, this was an exciting moment. You know, everything that we've been working for the last few years, um, and, and this is certainly the uh, crowning achievement. This is a, uh, an area that uh, in Danville that uh, needed some major work, and so now we are going to have uh, something that will be a showcase for all of Southside Virginia.
And you'll really be able to see some of the work taking place on this property over the coming weeks. Starting with the old water tower on the other side of this mill, that's going to come down next week to allow them to bring power to the property. That finishing mill will go as well at some point. They plan to break ground on this casino in December. Reporting in Danville, Daniel Cruz, ABC 13 News. People are excited. We heard him in the background there. Work changed one local pastor and his wife's lives forever. ABC 13's Daniel Cruz has their story of gratitude. Jesus. For Jeff and Jackie Lynch, the Lord's house is home each and every Sunday. But recently, their sermon began a little different. No matter what has happened in this past week, today is not about Jeff and Jackie. Just days before, this was their family home. Jeff had just finished mowing the lawn when his mower backfired, catching fire, and then it quickly spread. I was sitting on the front porch, and um, you said it got kind of hazy. Yeah, I saw the smoke <laughs> kind of starting to come up. They were able to get everyone out safely and dial 911. Someone stopped and was helping Jeff try to hook up our garden hose and he was back there. We were all out on the front <laughs> yard just praying that nothing in that shed was going to blow. Within hours of losing everything but the clothes on their backs, the community stepped up. But to go from a morning where you wake up and you realize not only do we not have a house to live in, I've got to put back on the same clothes that I had last night. People have just been so kind and yeah. so thoughtful. It's just been, I, I keep saying it, it's overwhelming and it's amazing. <laughs> They're thankful for the outpouring of support from their church family and neighbors. But even after losing everything, the couple had just one request for those who answered their calls for help. Could you just come to church with me? And she said, I will. So the fact that she's here um, with the people that she that she works, that came to my house. Um, I am forever grateful to you. It can seem contrived, I guess, to think that somebody, oh, they've gone through a fire and why are they still so positive or whatever. But I mean, truly for us, we've seen yeah. the outpouring. God has shown himself through his people during this time. Reporting in Danville, Daniel Cruz, ABC 13 News. School bus garage called, we'll have to get a second call. They're advising at 8879 Chatham Road. Child was getting off the bus, got struck by a vehicle. Get to Kayla's now. Jackson just got hit by a car. And I keep replaying that in my head. And I keep hearing her scream that to me. It was a phone call that sent shockwaves down Mickey Dalton's spine. Her grandson, eight-year-old Jackson Harris, is in the hospital with multiple injuries. Dalton says he's lucky to be alive. For an eight-year-old to be hit by a truck going 50, 60 miles an hour, he's a miracle. Jackson was getting off the school bus Thursday afternoon when state police say a pickup truck hit him and kept going. He has head and neck injuries bruised lungs and a broken femur on his right leg. He had surgery over the weekend and is in a neck brace. Today he was getting an MRI for his head and neck. Just a lot of headaches, um, his neck ache. Um, they focused first on his brain um, because, because he had two large lacerations um, to the top of his skull. Police arrested David Paul Walker on Friday, charging him with felony hit and run. As Jackson suffers in a hospital bed, his grandmother wants justice to prevail. I can't say in enough words, we're thankful that he's caught and we just want him to pay for what he's done. Several leaders on the South side are doing their part in the battle against COVID-19. City Council, other city leaders and the police chief got their first dose of the Moderna vaccine. ABC 13's Casey Baylor explains their push to get the community vaccinated. Well, all city leaders say they wanted to lead by example, but also influence others to get the COVID-19 vaccine. But for one council member, it means so much more after a battle with the virus and a devastating loss. Ready? Okay, let's do it. Getting the vaccine marks a new beginning for council member Reverend Larry Campbell Jr. I feel great. Um... It was not painful at all. He and his wife contracted COVID-19 back in June. Sadly, his wife succumbed to the virus. Campbell thought he was going to join her. It's not a pretty picture. Uh, when you actually see death and you think that you're going to die. But the new year brought a gift we all were hoping for, a vaccine. Wow. One by one, it's done. 
<laughs> City leaders took the first step of battling COVID-19. But well, we're here today, and thanks to Dr. Miller and the doctors in our community for letting us be the examples. And if we can do it, we want you to do it. Vice Mayor Dr. Gary Miller got all council members together to get the vaccine at Paths Community Medical Center. He already got two shots of the Pfizer vaccine and is working to make sure everyone in the community gets one. He says it's the only way to turn things around. It is a crisis right now, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. So we, this is the only thing that's going to turn the tide. And PASS will be working with the health department to vaccinate people ages 65 and older in a closed clinic this Saturday on Averett University's campus. Now, this event has already reached its capacity, but if you want to sign up for the next one, you should call the health department. For now, live in Danville, Casey Baylor, ABC 13 News. Our big story at 530, the Danville Police Department says it's outgrown its home, and that's making their jobs harder. But hope is on the horizon with the new headquarters on the way. ABC 13's Daniel Cruz shows us the progress. This is the current home of the Danville Police Department. 13,000 square feet of cramped office space, tight hallways, and with little technology. That building was built in 26, 27, 1926 and 1927, and the police department moved there shortly thereafter. And this will be the new home for the department at more than 40,000 square feet. Deputy Chief Ronald Hairston recently gave us a tour of the new building, currently under construction. We're going to have a real-time crime center. We'll also have a backup communication center. He says this is going to make their jobs much easier. Instead of being on different floors, it will put us uh, in one general area, which will improve communication, uh, also improve our ability to uh, operate, to expand. We have a number of individuals who now share offices, sometimes three uh, to an office. It will give us an opportunity to give uh, individual spaces. The $17 million project is the most cost-effective option for the city. $6 million of the initial funds are coming from Caesars Entertainment as part of the casino agreement. The new police station is on track to be complete by March of 2022. In Danville, Daniel Cruz, ABC 13 News.